everyone, welcome to today's video. Today, I would like to outline the GTI presentation. So presentation for GTI application. This might be also helpful if you present application to any other visa sub subclasses or you're actually looking at uh, different com uh, countries. But this is for me today, it's only applicable to GTI application. So if you, your, you know, your inquiry, your questions not related to the, this, you know, you don't need to watch this. Uh, obviously, this one is only uh, helpful and applicable to someone who's actually looking to migrate Australia under the Global Talent Independent Program, right? So what is the presentation? People think that it doesn't matter, okay? Uh, two sessions I mentioned about GTI strategy. So this is about, you're gonna think about competitors out there, you're gonna do research, you're gonna understand how many quotas are being used. You're gonna understand what particular type of candidate Australia government wants. Are they looking to 1%, are they looking 10%, are they looking to 5%, uh, which area they like, is that energy, is that battery, is that resource, is that water treatment. Is that cyber security, right? Is that um, quantum information, quantum computing? Is that, you know, fintech, fintech, within fintech, what do they want? Do they need legal compliance? Do they need security? Do they need a payment? Do they need any of the uh, retail banking, right? So you need to about, this is about strategy. You need to understand doing the market search. And when you're here, you're actually doing your market search because you're constantly thinking, oh, what's the information down there? Who provides correct information, right? So strategy is really about doing initial research, thinking about, you know, what information you have. Do you have full information or you have partial information? That's strategy. The second one I outlined the other day, it was about present uh, positioning. Positioning is saying, once you have all information before you, now that you're gonna make decision. Okay, because Australia government wants this, and what I'm going to stress out myself, you know, I may f specialize in med tech, if I'm software engineer, but I'm saying I'm specialized in med tech, and I'll be always doing, com uh, you know, codings for medical device company, right? For instance, like that. So this is about positioning. You position yourself in really narrow, really niche market really niche skill set okay you want to do that so it's called position now after that you're going to do percent your case okay how to present a case some of our areas i would like to mention here some of people are doing work deadly wrong and poor quality a poor quality application so many department this is the reason they are really slow in the way respect uh, you know decide the case previously you know before G january 2021 uh, 21 department used to process whatever lodge first, right? Now they put a category because so many applications received. So they say, okay, you know, I want going to, but the category itself doesn't really result in applications, uh, quality of application received because it's a result because, it's a result of because of large volume of application they received it. So it's nothing to do with quality though. However, the reason behind this is because they received so many applications, poor quality. Uh, so this is the reason the department has to work with us to, together to solve this problem. We are some kind of representative for per certain country and some agents for representative for other country. And for what we're doing here, it's actually won't make sure the quality is really good. So positioning is actually how, it, so it's presentation is about how you present your case in a way that it's a neat, it's a nice, neat, precise, right? Nice and neat and precise. Now, people dealing with these visa applications in the old time, old school uh, way of doing that. You know, when you go to the north of the UK, they still use PIOS documents. I know they now evolve a bit. You can actually do some things online. But usually if you have a business visas, you have PIOS documents. And you want to organize them in a way that's precise. You want to say, I have a lot of documents. I want to, you know, split into three parts. And I want them to read in order. And then I put highlighters, so I'll put these marks, I will make sure they read this, all right? This is like a, a, a real documents you send by post. These still applicable to business visas that processing in Hong Kong. Candidate from, uh, um, from China, of, you, know, uh, you know, China and you know, Hong Kong, they still processing in Hong Kong, and they still use papers, right? 
For applications that uh, some of the applications they already no longer use the uh, paperwork. For instance, part of visas they don't accept a part of visa application in paper anymore. It has to be online. And there's some uh, you know, exceptional circumstance you can't lodge online, right? And then you have to do the paper. The majority of cases now are actually done online and supporting documents are provided online. Now for GTR applications, it's a little bit different though. For the EOI stage, you cannot go through EMI account. Okay, so that's no EMI account for the EOI stage. EMI account. EMI account is really saying applications launch online and this is online system. Everybody can register. And as an organization, we have one EMI account to manage all applications. EMI account. Now, EOI can't. There is no EOI you can do it on an EMI account. So what we're going to do is you have a contact form. And you submit over there. All right. Now, when you submit over there, you can see that it's a limited documents, a limited size of documents, right? And people have this, and that form has changed quite a lot because we've been working on to continue on that form. We know that changing a lot. And people, the reason change a lot is because people don't understand. They do not understand. After launching the EOI online, you have to submit the supporting documents. It has to be really heavily heavy on evidence. So you have to have a similar document by email, which is very, very old school. I believe this will change very soon as well. Supporting documents, they submit by email. Okay. But during the email account, during the visa application, once you someone got an invitation, you can then dodge launch visa application. But I would like to focus on EOI stage because I heard a lot of agencies doing that. I don't know who they are was really bad by saying they're doing it all for free. And I'm, I'm, I'm warning everybody doing this work like that. If you approach professional service or approach anybody who won't claim they won't help you without registration or edu you know, education agencies, you no know, registration or overseas regi you know, agencies, no registration or they claim they have a relationship with the ex immigration officer, which has already been fired by immigration. Any of that, you need to make sure. If they say they do for free, you need to make sure that it's not the case because that file application is more complex than you think. Now we come to presentation. Now, in your account, when you launch, you're going to send supporting documents in a way that it's, you know, it's, it's concise and precise. Now, people say, I have an online you know, talk. I don't know how we're going to do that. Now, in terms of presentation, you're going to first of all, you're going to make sure these are precisely organized and these documents only help. Not just limited to document though, I just want you, it can be anyway, okay? As long as you're able to show, as long as you're able to show, it can be anyway, any method, as long as you're able to show by email or online form, all right? So not limited to that, it can be really creative. As long as you're able to show, Okay, in the way department can hit the button, can have a look, right? And then they're supposed to do that because they're gonna go to your LinkedIn. They're gonna go to search your LinkedIn. They're gonna search your LinkedIn connection. They're gonna search your Facebook and they're gonna do Google. They're gonna do Google search. They're gonna go to your company website anyway. So you're gonna allow them and not just allow them. You're gonna give them a direction. You're gonna give them a direction. Hey, excuse me, have a look about this. Now you're gonna give them direction. So presentation is critical. So for the lodgement itself, for the lodgement, it has to be really precise and concise in a way that you only provide information it's relevant to your visa grant. That's it. You only need to provide evidence, so supporting documents relevant to your visa grant. You do not need to provide anything that's not relevant. Okay, so long time ago and doesn't matter anymore. You can find any inf information. Um, but in this case, you know, uh, all of the presentation you need to think about uh, for three areas I want to just mention. One, you can be creative in providing what type of that evidence you're going to provide. Okay, evidences can be creative. Secondly, it has to be concise, precise in a way that is really organized. Thirdly, you are never limited to the online form. You're going to provide whatever you can to support your claim. Okay, that's third point. And this type of work, presentation work, it's really heavy. Okay, someone without co close knowledge to what you're doing, someone without cannot understand what you do. And so how you can distinguish these two is really looking at 
not looking at you know, not looking at some sort of search on a forum and talk this stuff about, you don't know what they're doing, the marketing purpose or whatever this is. You have to have a, I mean, judgment, right? Okay, so presentation is really, it's final stage application, which is I normally call lodgement. After you've done a strategy research, after you give a really in-depth search of your own profile compared to others, position yourself, and third stage, you come to the presentation. And presentation, it takes time, okay, it takes time. The reason candidate need to find us, which even I have really free information here, they want a professional service because we are offering something that they don't have, which is a blind spot, all right? Okay, blind spot. A candidate, if you do lot yourself, you know, um, you just look at this and uh, from your pers perspective, you don't know what's going on around you. And that is a block, block, blind spot. So we actually fit in this. We, we look at this as a third party and compared to others because we now have you know, access to statistics. I've done, I've, got, I've done so many of the applications successfully. We have really, really great numbers department. Now this is of a blind spot. So whoever you hide, they should be able to really fit in the blind spot taking a thing from different angle to understand your file. Now, obviously some of the candidates, they approach me in the past, I decline them. Even I tell them, I think you're good uh, in a GTA application. They never wanted to pay professional fee. They want me to give them a concrete answer. Now I declined this candidate, I said, you know, I understand, I'll be really genuine with you. I understand you're a good candidate, but I, I can't take you because I only work very selective candidates. Some candidate, you know, there they complain about me. After I gave right advice, say you're good candidates, and uh, simply because you're not willing to really go ahead with. I mean, we provide professional service. Bear in mind, here it is free, but when you need my personal attention, that's a professional service. That's one-to-one -one professional service. But if you watch my video, it's free. All right, so. Today, just an online presentation of our GTA application. Go through the three stages. One, you're gonna need a large, you're gonna need to lodge a contact form without not in the account. Secondly, you're gonna send documents by email. Thirdly, you want to organize documents that that's really precise, concise, and you want to hire a professional registered immigration lawyer, whoever this is, to offer you a blind spot assistance. All right, thank you very much for watching. I see you next time. Bye bye.